Oh, hopefully. You guys are going to get tired of seeing Karen. We back with a full auto guide to season 13 Solly. Also, it's a final. New, no refunds. Going to vent a little here. I hate making auto guides for Solly. <laughs> Honestly, I really hate, hate, hate it. Okay, now that that is out of the way, soldiers are up. Everyone has skill down. Lucky for us, most soldiers are farmable. I have a couple of teams as usual, a free to play as you can get with low gear, and a comp that can actually run mods. Let's go ahead and check them both out. Here we go for the free to play team. We got. All our little soldiers, supporters coming out with our wonderful mech just leading the charge, tanking all the shots so that our units aren't getting hit with that wonderful juicy shield it's got. And that's on damage gear. HP, HP, as I probably will sit there and say in the gear guide, it's probably better for Taras, but we you know we take it what we can. Now, Tempest is amazing here because it can actually stop the boss for a little bit. But no Kyle Wong actually needed. Though, I don't know how good Kyle Wong would actually be here with the skill haste down, but we take what we can work with. Plus, we get a whole bunch of little bitty soldier sniper dudes who are also probably buffed just from the, the, the soldier up this time. Now, Luckily, that wall is actually placed in a decent spot that it's going to sit there and tank pretty well. And now you'll notice that Choi Ina's on the team. She's actually super safe back there, just generating us a lot of DP. So when our units die, they just get respawn. Now, coming up here, there's going to be a, a point where the wrong units die and the right, or well, the wrong units live rather. Um. But that's okay, because we're going to have a whole bunch of DP just stacked up, so when she nukes our team, inevitably, they just flood right back out and continue the beatdown of this boss. Now, I make no guarantees on how well this boss can do, or well, how well this team can do. Uh, especially working with as many free-to-play units as I can fit in. I know Choina is technically not free to play or farm. Well, I mean, SR, define what free to play is, but she's not farmable, whereas the rest, for the most part, are. But overall, it's a decent clear. It has plenty of time in order to get you the minimum score that you need for this season. For Rivet, we're running Blaze Gear with as much ground damage as we can fit on her. Now, her built-in anti-CO damage is going to work wonders here because the boss is a CO. If you have attack anti-siege, that'll probably be her best setup or double anti-siege. Any type of combination of those. Um, Britta is going to be probably your best friend with range damage, attack, or crit damage, latents. Most people don't have C anti siege maze gear. Aureus is going to be rocking free to play CDR set with 67.8%. We want her spamming shields as much as possible. Juicyun is on the Antag set as well with the same skill haste as 67.8. We want his counter up as much as possible as well, so he's countering the mines. Tarask I have on blaze set here. You can run him on tank gear as well. Might actually be better. Toina I just have on an attack speed set. It really doesn't matter. Her best set would be swift to be honest. But we just want to sit there and fit as much attack speed as possible on her as well. So that she's gaining us some extra DP from when our units die. Rifleman I have on bullet chain with as much ground damage as I can. Obviously you can do better. 
And the same thing applies with attack and anti-siege sets being the better sets to put on it. If nothing else, A speed Brita will with any type of damage latents will be helpful here. Chifu, I just have on your standard, well, I say your standard tank here, but I have as much ground rest as possible on a broken set. HP, HP is going to be better for her. So Yoon, I have on ground res as well, so that she stays up as long as possible, and if she has the chance to sit there and use her death break again, she does that. So for the mods, we're taking minus 25% attack. Minus 25% HP, minus 40% A speed, minus 40% skill haste, and then the minus 30% DP gain. Now, if you're planning on autoing this with Tempest, minus 25% HP is pretty much the best you can do. That's you'll see you'll see in the clear that the wall doesn't really last that long, anyways. Currently with just minus 25%. If you try to take more than this, she basically just one shots it and it's of no use. All right. So for those of you who have these units, Again, we're going to use Taras to lead the charge towards this boss. Tempest again for that wonderful tower that just spawns out of nowhere right on top of the boss. I honestly don't know where that wall comes from, to be honest. We got Sinjia pumping out shields, giving everybody additional skill haste. Not that that really matters for the current units on the field. Agnes tanking that ball that mine like a champ along with rivet coming out just pounding away on the boss and then we got a little soldier dudes again look at them look at them back there they're just all shooting at the boss hello coming out looking fly immediately getting that counter off now that wall placement you may think is bad but the boss back steps right behind it which is amazing which is just enough spacing so Aegea can actually sit here and ulti now not a ton of people are sitting in the circles for Aegea or the circles you can't fit both of them in unfortunately until this phase here but rivet stands in between both of the circles so it works out really well unfortunately Sane died which Kinda did end up messing up the score a little bit here, but either which way, it's a clean 1600 score on auto. I, I really can't ask for more with working with no towers other than Tempest Wall. No surprise, the unit with 80% counter damage is top DPS. Starting with Tarask. We're running Tarask on full HP so it doesn't die. Plus, it basically gives Sinjia a free path to the boss right at the start. So, we're running in as much ground res as possible and crit res. Sinjia, we're running on as much skill haste as we possibly can, as well as being tanky. I have two decent swift pieces, so mine's at 78. 76 will work just fine. Agnes I have on attack speed Brita and this is important she needs to have at least two pieces of ground res at minus 25% HP mod or there's a chance that the mine can crit and kill her besides that she's got 24% range damage and 33% anti-ground damage Chifu I have on HP HP. This isn't really an optimized build. She doesn't need this much ground or total res in general. Um, I, and then she has her EE. Rivet I have on attack anti-siege with as many damage latents as I can fit onto her.
For Ella, I have her on full CDR so that she can counter as much as possible. Sane, I have on double anti-siege, but I'm going to be honest with you, her damage for as late she comes out, it actually might be better to put her on HP HP because you'll see in the run that she actually dies. And I think if she had at least maybe one, you know, a little bit more ground res or just full tank gear that she'd actually survive long enough that her passive would benefit your team better. And then Soyu and I have on HP HP just so nothing goes wrong. She doesn't get sh killed by some random anything, and she's able to get her special off. For the op, it's Kim Hana. And then for the ship, here are the Latents. Oh, thank God that's done and over with. I hope this helps everyone get the minimum score needed. If you don't have Tempest, I highly suggest building one. It's probably one of the better ships to build in this game. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're feeling extra special, you can also join the Mage Army by clicking the Join button. You can catch me on Discord, link will be in the description, and if you want to help support this channel, you can find a link for that in the description as well. As always, I will see you all next time.